So you were taking an argumentation class. What did you get yourself into? Were you thinking that you would learn how to come out on top when you were involved in screaming matches, learn how to push your point of view on others, essentially be able to win every argument? If so, you are in for a rude awakening, because that's not what argumentation is. Sure, you will learn how to construct an appropriate argument as well as deconstruct and identify flaws in weak arguments, but that doesn't guarantee that everyone will accept your arguments. This video lecture will focus on a definition of argumentation, touch on the two different types of argumentation, discuss what's involved in the argumentation process, and finally, differentiate between an argument and argumentation. But before we get to a definition, let's address the value of argumentation. Argumentation benefits us and society in at least three ways. First, it helps us identify issues for discussion. It also helps clarify perceptions, as in the process of making an argument or asking questions about arguments you are clarifying. It also helps us advocate for different points of view so that hopefully we will be able to make rational decisions. In other words, argumentation is key to the development of a healthy society. Argumentation occurs during the decision-making process, which can be defined as when two or more people communicate reasons to arrive at a satisfactory selection amongst alternatives. Basically, people are exchanging reasons on their way to choosing between two or more possible options. We make decisions all the time, whether to eat in or dine out, which laptop would best suit our needs, which political candidate to support, etc. The formality of the argumentation varies based upon the formality of the situation. Argumentation with your family and friends, for example, is likely to be less formal than the argumentation you engage in with co-workers, while argumentation in a court of law tends to be very formal. Which leads us to the types of argumentation. Some scholars separate argumentation into two categories. When you are engaging in general argumentation, no special knowledge is required, but the argumentation must fit with what most people in society regard as factual and reasonable. General argumentation is also linked to acceptable social values, meaning that if you are arguing that someone has taken advantage of you, most people would consider that a violation of the generally accepted social value of fairness. Any argumentation which tries to persuade the general public is general argumentation, such as advertisements and election campaign messages, and this type of argumentation tends to be more on the informal side. In specialized argumentation, however, only trained professionals who know the rules are qualified to argue, and only trained professionals may interpret these rules of argumentation. For example, if you've ever been on a jury or watched a lot of courtroom dramas, you know that attorneys have specialized knowledge and can play by the courtroom rules, and that judges have both the knowledge and power to interpret and enforce those rules. You may find specialized argumentation occurring in arbitration and mediation situations, as well as in certain business contexts. Now let's define argumentation. I like the definition provided by Richard Ritke and Malcolm Sellers at the University of Utah in their textbook, Argumentation and Critical Decision Making. Argumentation is the process of advancing, supporting, modifying, and criticizing claims so that appropriate decision makers may grant or deny adherence. You'll notice that the central term in this definition is claims. Before we discuss the process, let's look at what a claim is. A claim, also known as a proposition, can be considered a single statement that is advanced for the adherence of others. Let's first address the term adherence. Argumentation always has an audience, which includes one or more persons who are capable of being influenced or persuaded, and as a result, may accept or reject the claim or the argument. If the audience accepts the claim, we say they grant adherence. If, however, they reject the claim, then they deny adherence. So a claim is a single statement advanced or set forth for others to accept or reject. A single statement, such as argumentation is the best class you can take in college. If you agree, you've granted adherence. When you link claims with others and use other claims to support a claim, you are building a case. You can support claims with evidence or reasoning, or not. A claim without support is called an assertion, but we'll get back to that. Here's a visual representation of building a case. 
you would have a major claim. Argumentation is the best class you can take in college. You would support that major claim with subclaims, such as it teaches you how to think critically and you'll learn to be a better researcher. Each of those claims might be supported with other claims and with evidence. In this example, you are building a case to support another claim, the conclusion. In this case, I would be attempting to influence you or persuade you to take an argumentation class. Let's get back to that definition of argumentation as the process of advancing, supporting, modifying, and criticizing claims so that appropriate decision makers may grant or deny adherence. A process is a series of actions or steps that you take to achieve a particular end. In this case, the end is the decision you want the decision makers to make. Appropriate decision makers are those who will make the final decision or who will impact the final decision. Before you engage in argumentation, you should determine who the appropriate decision makers are, and that may not be obvious. Why waste your time building a case for someone who can neither grant nor deny adherence? Which leads us to adherence, which you already know from earlier. But what are you doing with these claims? You are advancing them or putting forth arguments. You also support these claims. You justify them. Actually, when you support claims, you are making additional claims, also called secondary claims. Remember that a claim without support is called an assertion. Support can come in a variety of forms, such as evidence, values, reasoning, and credibility. If your original case comes under attack, you may have to modify it, compromising so that not all is lost. If my claim is that argumentation is the best class you can take in college, you may question that requiring me to modify that claim to something like argumentation is one of the best classes you can take in college. Of course, modifying occurs in the refutation process, as there's no need to modify it if you haven't been challenged. Criticizing is the analytical process where you consider the logic, the use of evidence, the use of language, etc. This also occurs in the refutation process, since you can't critically analyze something unless you have a piece of rhetoric. Please note that the end result of criticism is not always negative. When you criticize, you are evaluating both the faults and the merits of claims. After criticizing, you may accept the claim as valid. Last concept. What is the difference between an argument and argumentation? An argument is a single claim. It can be an assertion, meaning it is offered on its own without any support, or it can be backed up by support, which are secondary claims. In both cases, the claim is used to attempt to influence or persuade someone in the context of a disagreement where a decision will be made. Argumentation, however, is the entire process of advancing, supporting, modifying, and criticizing claims. Quiz time. Can you define a claim? And related, what do you call a claim without support? Can you see how you use claims to build a case? And finally, what is the difference between an argument and argumentation? So when you engage in argumentation, don't think that you have to yell louder or bulldoze over someone to win an argument. Hopefully you now understand that argumentation is a valuable process where you make your points or your claims clearly and logically, understand and critique the arguments that are made by others, and justify your points when challenged.